Walking along Clapham High Street, you may have noticed Jeanette Fashions, a haberdashery shop which was Clapham High Street's longest running independent shop, trading in the area since the late 1950s. As the son of Ukrainian tailors who fled anti-Semitic pogroms in 1902, David Dorfman and his wife Jeanette set up the family business on Clapham High Street in 1959. After their son and the shop's final owner, Maurice Dorfman, passed away in 2020, Clapham photographer Jim Grover decided to dedicate an exhibition to Maurice behind the shop facade, which pieces together his life. Back in 2016, I was doing a project all about Clapham High Street, and I was looking for distinctive shopkeepers uh, to tell their story. And I'd never been into Maurice's shop before, but I noticed this rather interesting kind of aging facade. So I pushed the door open, it was an evening, and at the far end was this lovely man, Maurice Dorfman, sitting behind his cutting table. And so I wandered over, had a chat, and it all started from there. Held in Clapham Library until the 28th of May, the exhibition spans three floors and features both Jim's photographs, as well as Maurice's vintage slides, 1960s home movies, and testimonies from friends and neighbours. When I first encountered him in his kind of 80s, uh, I found a man living by himself, uh, looking a little kind of, you know, past his best. And I felt sad for him. I felt he was a man living by himself, lonely in the shop. And what was actually so um, uplifting was to discover he'd lived a really full life. You know, he had been a sailor and a dancer. He'd had girlfriends, motorbiking, camping, travel. He, was, he had a really lovely full life and that I found kind of very reassuring. I found out a lot about him and also his grandparents, having gone all the way back to 1902 when they arrived as refugees from the Ukraine. But there's, an, there's about 15 years of his life I know nothing about when he was growing up. He was born in the East End, 1932, and I next come across him with certainty when he's 18, about to start national service. But his entire childhood, which he spent in Essex, when his dad and his uncle were making clothes for the British Armed Forces, I don't know much about his schooling, his school friends, his early life. Life, that's a big gap for me. To organise the exhibition, Jim raised more than £8,000 through crowdfunding, and a lot of the information about Maurice's life came from the local community. So I just reached out and cold called and sort of got in touch with people and said, you know, would you be willing to share your story about Maurice? Uh, and the, sort of the wave of desire to help me create this tribute was just so wonderful. Everyone wanted to help. Even you know, a couple of weeks before the exhibition, I had two people saying, I've got a story to tell you. Uh, it, just, it, it, it kept coming in. And when you say haberdashery, what, what sort of thing, what, what were the most popular things you were selling? Do you remember? Patterns, mostly. Patterns, Patterns yeah. and the ones that were... Because uh, I had a lot more fa fabric in here. I had sh there were shelves going right down the centre there. And I'd, I had every type of fabric you could want. Silks, satins, jacquards, everything. Wedding dress fabrics, everything. Anything, silks, all that sort of thing. And uh, people used to buy their patterns. And um, then they'd buy the fabric. Jeanette Fashions closed its doors for what would be the last time in late December 2019 when Maurice was taken to hospital. He died in care in February 2020 at age 87 and was buried in a woodland burial ground in Kent by friends and customers. Two years later, the shop remains virtually untouched and its future is uncertain, but Jim is glad to have documented its owner's long and varied life. I love celebrating life. I like finding traditions, communities, unsung heroes, and I like to find them on my doorstep here in South London because I'm convinced there are lots of amazing stories to be discovered. Uh, and so I found that if, you, if you're curious and interested in people, there's a wealth of stories to be told. And this is just one.